What the United States does about Syria doesn't just have implications for that country. It has implications for other rogue regimes around the world that are watching what we do there. And we're very lucky to have Fox News editor at large, George Russell, here to talk about one of those regimes, namely North Korea. George, welcome to the show. Hi, Mary. Um, You've described North Korea as Syria's silent partner when it comes to weapons of mass destruction. What did you mean by that? Well, silent partner only in the sense that they don't brag about it, but there has been a large pile of evidence over nearly a decade of their quiet involvement in Syria's program. Starting in 2005, Syria misfired a missile into Turkey that was later analyzed to have North Korean equipment on it to allow for the airbursts of chemical weapons. In 2007, there was another incident. There was an explosion in Syria where a number of North Korean technicians died where they were trying to load mustard gas onto a missile. So clearly, they're up to their, uh, their elbows at the very least. You'll recall in 2007, the Israelis also bombed a nuclear reactor that was built to exactly North Korean lines in Syria that everyone denied was there. So you're talking not just about chemical weapons, but also possible nuclear cooperation between these two rogue regimes. That's very serious. So uh, you're also probably one of the best sourced guys on the United Nations, which continues to funnel money into North Korea. Why would we do that? Why would we continue to support a regime that's building up this kind of a relationship with a place like Syria? Well, the United Nations is doing what we have from time to time wanted. Since the 90s, we've been funneling money to North Korea in the hopes and, and uh, petroleum and nuclear equipment in the hopes that uh, they would turn off their own nuclear weapons program. Instead, they've accelerated uh, they've set off three nuclear bombs, and moreover, during the same period... And we is, also ignored Syria's chemical weapons development, too, didn't we? We did, indeed. And more importantly, it's during this period when we were giving the most money to North Korea that they were accelerating their collaboration with Syria. So what is the message, then, that Pyongyang gets when it sees President Obama and Secretary of State Kerry say to Syria... Saad, you can stay in place. Now we're going to talk about some fanciful chemical weapons disposal program. What's the lesson you would take away if you were Kim Jong-un? Well, the lesson they seem to have taken away is that they restarted a nuclear reactor uh, <laughs> the other day that they, have, uh, that they shut down because we were offering them a lot of money. Uh, they started this process in April when they announced that they were going to do it. And that, by the way, is roughly the time in which small-scale chemical weapons attacks began in Syria. So I see both of these as being a testing of the same theory. What can we get away with? What can we get away with? In the meantime, what do your sources in the United Nations tell you about Syria, this relationship? Is it something that the UN cares about, is doing anything about, or do they just sort of sweep it under the carpet? I don't see uh, the UN as being anything but a talking shop at the moment for contending uh, forces that have differing views on this. On the humanitarian front, they just want the money. They want to be able to distribute it. They're going to be distributing billions of dollars to Syria as a direct result of this civil war. And I think that gives the United Nations a role that it otherwise wouldn't have. Well, a role that the United Nations otherwise wouldn't have. There are a lot of links here that aren't being drawn in the national media. We're so grateful to you to come on the show and to connect these dots. We hope you'll come back again soon. Thank you. Fox News editor-at-large, George Russell.